Greetings, nail techs. Camera turned around here. We'll give everybody a chance to join in. Hello, hello, hello. Come on in. Today I'm uh, rocking Eeyore here because I'm feeling rather Eeyore ish today. Not really quite sure why, although he is one of my favorites, so, you know. So we'll let everybody get filed on in here. Hello, I see all those hearts. Hi, everybody. It is January, yes, my favorite. It is January 28th. Um, you are here for Nails Over Coffee, and this is said coffee. Um, and nothing too exciting today, though. It's just regular sweet cream creamer. Um, I'm really bummed since Coffee Make got rid of the Star Wars ones, because, hi, because I really, really, really liked the marketing of Darth Vader and all that kind of stuff. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, you guys share away and all of that kind of fun stuff, because I would like to talk about some nail art today. And so I'm hoping you guys, I'm, I kind of want to hear what everybody else thinks too, because, well, I know what I think, but... Oh, I know what everybody else thinks and what everybody else's experiences are. So we all see a lot of this like crazy good nail art stuff, right? And we're like, dude, nobody's ever paying me to do that. It's beautiful. But I think of it a lot like runway fashion. Like there's designers who do couture things to go on the runway. And then it's another designer's job to take those trends and make it into something that's streetwear, right? And that's kind of how I feel about us. But at the same time, there are some things that I don't know if you guys share my dislike of doing. And I'm just going to preface this by saying, if any of my clients are listening to this, I will do whatever you ask, but that doesn't mean I like it. So <laughs> that's just had to put that little disclaimer in there. So I have some pictures that I have pulled off of Pinterest. And boy, when you blow up a picture really big, like you do on a handy dandy iPad, you can very definitely tell nails that were done in the pictures by hand and ones that were done using like vinyls and stencils and stuff. Now I haven't used any of these vinyls and things, but I want to try them. So I sort of want to hear what you guys have to think because um, like this nail right there, I've done that and it doesn't look very difficult, but it's a pain in the ass. Like it seriously is. And you can tell from this picture that that was clearly painted by hand because the lines aren't very clear when you look at it that big and that close up, right? So I know there's a stencil for like that design. Is that, has anybody who's listening used the stencils for that type of design? And have you used it with gel polish or just regular polish or um, not yet? Okay, yes, it is a pain. Everybody agreeing with my, it's a pain in the ass. Hey, I call it like I see it, man. <laughs> like, Just because it looks cute at the end when it's done doesn't mean it's something we enjoy doing in the meantime. Um, we just enjoy the result. So I'm all about trying to figure out how to do it quickly with not a lot of product expense in the salon in a manner that we can make money because that's really the end of it, right? Like we need to be able to make money. We're not, it's like I've talked about water marbling before. Water marbling is, it takes too long for it to be profitable for us to do that style in the salon. For people who are doing their nails at home, it's an awesome, awesome, cool thing and it works exactly like it's supposed to. But I keep telling my clients, I'm like, you don't wanna pay me for the amount of time. So, Okay, so let's see. If you don't peel the vinyl away as soon as you polish, it will leave the design wonky and not neat. Right, I did see that um, Tanya Sisson from CND, um, Island Nail Girl, um, I saw that she did a tutorial where she used some um, vinyl type things and she um, cured and then peeled it off uh, when she was doing it with gel polish and she got really nice clean lines. So... 
Um, yeah, I mean, you can use striping tape for a lot of these things, but see, that's my problem is that striping tape takes forever unless you're doing just like one line on a nail. So like this one, here's another good picture here. This one, I'm sure we've all seen it, right? And it's got different colors in between every stripe, which the stripes coincidentally match the other nails. So if you're thinking about doing this, right, you could actually do all the nails silver. So you're doing it all in one swoop. That's not taking you any extra time. And then, but then you need something. You either need striping tape that you lay down one, two, three, four, eight, sixteen pieces of striping tape all perfectly lined up in the middle. Or, or you could use the um, chevron um, vinyls, which that's kind of, and little like basic one point chevrons like that are not my biggest concern. The ones I really hate are those. Oh my God. Like shoot me now. Or those. Sweet mother of God. I would rather just hang them up doing nails because you can never get those lines perfectly. You can, when you're freehand painting them, you can never get the points in exactly the right place. And look how clean those lines are. Look at that. Like, and now that, which we saw super close up compared to this, which was clearly done with vinyls, but yeah, that other one could have been a stamp. Um, this was clearly done with vinyls, but see, they pulled it off before that. So I think, I think, let me pull it up in my handy dandy iPad. Yeah, I mean, some of the stuff we see is foiled. Some of it's stamped. But this is what I found from What's Up Nails. It is skinny zigzag tape. And you can pull it off either in one stripe or you can pull off alternate stripes and then keep the other ones for when you need to do a single stripe. But it looks like that. I don't know if you can see the fine details of the other ones, what it looks like when it's all put together. But then you can peel off alternating ones or whatever you need. Maybe you need to peel off two and leave a big thing. Yeah, I mean, I think that on some of those, and these are only four seventy five dollars for a sheet of 20 of these things. Now, that's not very expensive, you know, and that's something that if it saves us time in the salon and time is money, and we get the clean lines we're looking for. Yeah, I think, um, and there's a tutorial on What's Up Nails uh, Nail Art Store too, right? And they have all kinds of them. Um, they've got skinny zigzags and, and, and fat zigzags and, oh my gosh, just so many, so many kinds. Um, vinyl tape and guides. Okay. Um, let me see if I can pull this up. And so I, I don't like, I feel like maybe this is the trend that we should be looking for as salon people. Like, okay, for example, this is regular straight tape, right? And then there's one that's skinny tape. That's regular straight tape, that's skinny tape. Well, other than the fact that pulling the individual lines out of that skinny tape with tweezers would also be enough to make me want to die. But um, there was another picture that I had on here. Let me go back to my photos. Um, no, no, that's Pinterest. Oh, no, maybe it's not. Okay, this. Now this is clearly hand painted, right? They're a little bit different widths apart. You can see they're pretty uneven. Now that's still fine enough work for most of us doing real quick in the salon. But if you're charging, like my nail art upcharge is $15 for 15 minutes. If I'm charging an extra $15 to be able to add the stripes and the sparkles and dots on the other nail or whatever to both hands, then I want cleaner lines than that. And so that's why I'm thinking that 
maybe investing the little bit of money in like, I mean, and some of the other cool stuff they have on here is these like, have you seen the videos with this stuff? The square spirals, right? That you put them down, you put down the base color, then you put that down, then you put on the color over the top, cure it if you're doing gel polish or just let it set up if you're doing regular polish, and then you grab the outside end of the spiral and you just go bloop and it leaves that print on the nail. Isn't that cool? Um, I just feel like, okay, and for like example, this one, this is the Greek tape. Can you imagine trying to do anything with that shit? I'm sorry, in the salon if you weren't using that? Like, I can't. My head would explode. So, I think that I'm going to be ordering some stuff from the What's Up Nail Art, What's Up Nails.com. I think I'm going to be ordering some stuff from there and giving that a try. In addition to my goal for this year has been to, um, my goal from this year has been to learn how to one stroke paint because I think it's something that can be done that's beautiful, that can be done quickly um, in the salon. Um, but I think I might be adding some of these vinyls too. Any info on the Huggy Nail stuff from yesterday? Yes. It is a Canadian website, um, but you can order and they will deliver to the U.S. And uh, I'm not going to complain right now. The poor Canadians trying to buy stuff from the U.S. suppliers, the exchange rate sucks. But it's way better for us in the U.S. going the other way. So um, it's a Canadian website. Um, I think it's nailhugs.com. Um, I'm pretty sure it's in the comments under yesterday's video. And um, I'm going to order some from there. And then the website for the vinyls that I've been looking at today is whatsupnails.com. So W-H-A-T-S-U-P-N-A-I-L-S.com. And I'll put that in the links below too on Facebook. But um, I don't know. I'm just all about this whole, like there's this one, which is, it'll take a second to load here. That's oval tape. And I'm like, the cool things we could do with that, when you have to do like some, you know, crazy nail art that somebody found on Pinterest or something, you know what I mean? Like, right? Target. Um, it seems like that those would be really cool for, um, okay, so yeah, you can select from two sheet sizes. Medium sheet contains 20 sections. And a large sheet contains 30 sections and they're made in vinyl and they're from, it's from Arizona. So, um, I think I'm going to be buying some, ordering some nail hugs from Canada because I think those look really cool. And I think I'm going to be, um, ordering some of these vinyls. Does the industry source or Cosmo Prof have any nail art stuff? Not really. And that's been sort of surprising to me. Because the industry source is such a big catalog. But then again, think about like us in our salons with nail art. We can only have little bits of each kind until we get to a point that we've just bought so much for so many years that we have a gazillion of everything. Now, factor that into being a reseller. How long it would take and how much capital it would take to stock enough of a quantity that it would be worth um, to do. Yes, like me and glitter. Oh, I see the name on this one. For everybody who's watching on Periscope, that is my offspring that is commenting. And yes, like me and glitter, I have finally accumulated enough glitter that I finally have just about every color that I need. Close. I'm still looking for that dark orange old Easy Flow color that I can't find anymore. And I have to find it by Halloween again. But I digress. So, yeah, I mean, um, and What's Up Nails, uh, it's kind of cool. On their website, they also show on their sales page Instagram photos using this product. So that's kind of cool because then you get a chance to see, because we all see the same pictures over and over again, right? Like, so... Um, you know, and then um, there's some tutorial videos on here. So they talk about stuff like when you put them down to use a 
okay I call them fiberglass scissors but um, you know I'll get to that in a second right um, I use fiber I call them fiberglass scissors because we used to use them for cutting fiberglass mesh but um, because so they're because they're a little short and they're like super sharp um, but then putting the striping tape across right and then using an orange wood stick to press it down into the sidewalls and then taking your scissors and giving a little snip at the edge so that you can press it down in the sidewalls a little bit so that way your design goes all the way to the edge and if you're doing it with gel polish it's even better because then after you cure it you come back and you can pick up the edge of it with your tweezers and just go and then yeah I totally just said fiberglass showing my nail tech age um, something that I heard somebody mention. so what rain had popped up on here and said was couldn't like the oval ones be used for perfect smile lines and stuff yes but they also have guides for smile lines and the cool tutorial that I saw is if you're trying to do the perfect moons in the back how's this Go to the office supply store and buy the little uh, um, reinforcers that you get to put on notebook paper, the little round circle donut things that you put on notebook paper so that they don't tear where the holes are. You get those and you stick them down on the skin like that. And then when you, reinforcements. Okay, so I wasn't like, you know, being like totally technical, but... You put them down on the back and then you paint around it and then you cure it if you're doing gel polish and then you can just from the edge of the skin you don't even need to use your tweezers from the edge of the skin you can just go bloop and pull it right off and that would be way cheaper than any of these vinyls or anything so that would be kind of cool I've just kind of done the base color on the back and then I freehand paint out where the moon is um, when I'm doing gel polish and then I go back through with my clean gel brush and clean up where I just did to make it perfect um, I figure if I can get clean smile lines most of the time with French if I can't get clean smile lines doing half moons then I'm kind of yeah great for negative space so I did some negative space um, artwork a while back on with um, gel polish over acrylic on one of my regular clients and it was super easy to do because I did lines and dots and those kind of things but I think if I had to do like swirls or chevrons or any of that kind of stuff it would have been a real pain so I'm thinking with these vinyl things um, not like you could see any of that I just held up because of the light um, but I'm thinking with these vinyl things that we could, with like those vinyl, they have the wide zigzags. So this thing that I said was like a nightmare for me. If we had those vinyl zigzag things, think about how easy that could be. You know, you put on a color, you flash care. You put on a color, you flash care. You put on another color, you flash care. And then you cure the whole thing. Like, especially nails like this because there's a color in the chevrons that's the same as the other two nails are base colored. So again, you could do all of that color at the same time on all, well, all 10 nails. And then lay down your chevrons and do the other colors. Right? Wouldn't that be cool? Anyway, so... um. How do you guys feel about the nail art stuff in the salon? I hear lots on the internet where people are like, they don't feel like they get paid um, for doing nail art. Um, what, what do you guys think? Because see, the way I do my nail art is if it doesn't cost me any extra time and it only maybe costs me very little in extra product, so like maybe I'm just doing something simple with a nail art striper paint or I'm doing a glitter accent nail or something like that. It doesn't take me any extra time. So I don't generally charge for that. I just do it as kind of a included in the service kind of thing. 
Um, but if somebody brings me in a picture of something that they've found and um, that they really want, oh yeah, do yourself a favor, go find all of your clients on Pinterest, all of your clients on Instagram, and the day before their appointment, go look at what they've been pinning or what they've been posting or liking on Instagram so that you have an idea of where their head's at when they come in for your for their appointment. Totally telling you, totally saves your brain space when you're in the salon that day. Totally. Um, but so if somebody says, hey, I'd really like to have this, um, that's where I, um, I'm glad you enjoy. Um, that's where I start saying, okay, I need to get a different, um, yeah, if you're charging 15 minutes of nail art and you can do it in 15 minutes, um, yeah, you can do it. I mean, that's, so, so I say to people, if they send me something like really, like, totally crazy, like some nutty, like tribal design or whatever. Um, I say, yes, I can totally do that, but that's going to take me extra time. So we need to book an extra 15 minutes and, um, the nail art is $15 for 15 minutes. And, um, that covers product and time, which is on par with what I charge generally, you know, um, and considering it's more product intensive, that's the little bit different. Um, but like my gel polish manicures are $35 if I, um, or $35 if I don't need to do removal of anything. And I charge extra for removal if they're coming from somewhere else. If it's my removal, I don't charge um, for my regulars. But if it's um, removal coming from somewhere else, then yeah, they're paying an extra at least 10 for removal. Um an extra 15 minutes. So when you think about $10 for removal and 15 minutes versus $15 for nail art and 15 minutes, it keeps my pricing all in kind of the same because the nail art supplies cost more to have on hand than the supplies for soak off, which are the same for everybody. So thoughts on pricing nail art too. But yeah, see, like I don't want, I don't want to do nail art that's going to routinely take me 15 minutes or a half an hour, even if they're paying for it, if that's going to catch me off guard when they come sit in my chair. I mean, I think that's sort of a, just a discussion you have to have with your clients as you offer nail art is being able to say, hey, I can totally do all of these cool things you find, but I need to know about it ahead of time when we're booking you because I need to know how much time to book you for. Because what I really don't want is to have somebody leave disappointed because they couldn't get the nail art done they wanted to get done because we didn't have enough time or to run 15 minutes late all day for the rest of my clients because I didn't know what nail art they wanted. Like somebody loses no matter what. And so... I just need to know ahead of time. That makes our day so much more peaceful. So, that was my little chat about nail art today. Like 3D flowers and stuff like that, and bows and all that stuff. Like, that's cool, especially, I saw a tutorial, I'll try and find it. Um, um, the, um, uh, making 3D bows at, by yourself, so you don't have to order it. Um, I find it very hard to charge for nail heart. I usually just do $5 per nail. Well, and that's true. Like, you know, you kind of have to go along with what your clientele normally wants. So like if your clientele normally wants designs on an accent nail, so that $5 per nail is totally like, you're charging $10 for probably about what's about 10 minutes extra of work. So you're not, you know, I mean, that's on par. Um, so same thing with, you know, but if your clients were only, say the vast majority of your clients were only doing a glitter accent nail, well, we as nail techs know that charging $5 for a glitter color on top of a gel polish that already has an ambition layer is like highway robbery. So I think that, but you still deserve to get paid for the glitter 
product that we have hundreds of dollars of glitter sitting around. Um, so even just a dollar a nail upcharge on that. So like my, um, even though my nail art is $15 for 15 minutes, on my style seat scheduler and everything, I actually just have my nail art listed as $1. Yeah, see, um, not charging for glitter polish. I, um, my style seat thing says nail art is $1 and up. And it books an extra 15 minutes. Now, I'm currently not using online booking. Um, I'm booking it myself, but I used to use online booking for my clients, and I will go back to it. Um, and so that way, they could add the 15 minutes. They knew there was going to be an extra charge, but they had to actually contact me to find out how much that extra charge was going to be if they wanted to know ahead of time. So again, I think it's that developing that relationship with your clients. And usually I've got a pretty good idea. Like I've been watching all of my clients pin on Pinterest for the last like week or two um, with Valentine's Day stuff. So I've got a pretty good idea where everybody's heads out when they come in for their appointment. Um, so that definitely helps kind of keep everything more like at a scheduled pace because time is money, man. Like we don't have time for us to spend 20 minutes figuring out what they're going to do and then 15 minutes doing it and then only charging an extra five bucks. Like, no, no, uh-uh, not happening. So it's all part of your process. Like you got to figure out how you work that personally into your process, how it works for you. I happen to be on the internet a gazillion hours a day researching all kinds of stuff. And so for me, it's really easy just to follow, um, to take a look at my style seat schedule for the next day, see who I have booked, take a pop over their Pinterest board, see what they've pinned lately under their nail board because they all have a nail board. And, um, you know, so... Um, yeah, this factors into that pricing and process thing and all that stuff. So, anywho, I think I've used up all my time. I have. It is 1227. So, I think that, unless anybody else has anything to join in. Oh, that's funny. I just realized my headband has chevron zigzags on it. How's that? That's so funny. Like, Apparently, I just have zigzags on the brain. Literally. This shows a good example of what a nut I am. Uh, so make sure that you go check out the Facebook page for University of Nails. And um, yes, my daughter noticed my chevrons on my head. And um, make sure that you are sharing the information about University of Nails. We totally need to get that out so that people can... Um, can get signed up for $10 a month. You can get tons of business education and it can help you really like step by step through your process and so that you're more profitable and you make more money and you don't lose your mind having to do nails all day. So uh, universityofnails.com is that site and it's live and then, um, you know, share on Facebook and share, shout from the rooftops, share with the world. I'm going to go back in the studio to record next week. And so I'm going to get probably eight more videos up in the next week or so. And so it's definitely time to get on board. All right. It's 1230. My time's up. I will talk to you guys later. Happy nailing. Bye.